I recognise those voices. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, welcome everyone to, to what is Sam Stoza's last pre-tournament or um, press conference, and we're going to say as a player. <laughs> um, we're obviously hugely proud of everything you've achieved, Sam. I'm going to throw to Craig to have a few words. Thanks, Prue. Thanks, Sam. Um, it was kind of surreal walking over here with Sam when you realise as a player this will be her last time that she will face the press to answer those questions. I can guarantee you it won't be the last time you'll face the press um, <laughs> because uh, one thing that's uh, about Sam is what she did in her career as a tennis player will transcend in what she does in her career as whatever that's going to be and we know it's going to be in the game in tennis and helping support the next generation of athletes that are coming through um i can recall very many fond memories of sam i think uh, when i arrived in australia it was just the beginning of think the struggles that you were having and then uh, the way you handled those as a true champion there was no question at some point you were going to enjoy a great success which you did as a multiple grand slam winner Thank both you. in mixed and in doubles and of course the US Open title. Um, I also remember it's great seeing the team over there that have pretty much been on the journey um, from the beginning with you and I know there's a couple missing, they're doing other things with, with younger players now but, but Sam we just want to thank you from everyone in Australian tennis for what you've meant to the game, um, what you've meant to each of us individually as people. Um, you've been a shining light to every single athlete or coach that uh, can get um, great lessons from actually seeing it in front of them. Uh, your you. effort, your, and I can give you a long list of things, your work ethic, your attitude, your preparation, um, and how you carried yourself both in, in success and in defeat. So um, I'm looking forward to working with you in the next step in your career. I know Mole is and Killer and Casey, the whole crew are looking <laughs> forward to working with you in the next step. and, and um, and I think the uh, I think you can look back and reflect, and know that you've achieved everything you could possibly do, and uh, look back at it with great pride. Thank so you. So thank you, and uh, over to now anyone for questions for Sam. Well done, <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Craig. I'd like to give you a hand, please. Uh, first question, Sam. You said in your post that it's with mixed emotions that you make this announcement, and I think that probably speak to all of us in this room, whether it's the media who've covered your career or the, the team that supported you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk us through a little bit about the, the perhaps the last few weeks as you've been planning this and thinking about it? Yeah, um, yeah, it certainly is. I mean, I'll try and get through this without crying, but um, look, it's, it was always going to be a hard decision whenever it did come to this point. Um, you know, like I said last year, when I stopped playing singles, I always wanted to finish here in Australia and last year I wasn't ready to finish everything um, so yeah played doubles last year and and it just felt right to call it a day here my home grand slam where obviously I have huge support um, and friends and family and and lots of people here so it's uh it's certainly been a tough decision but I think it was the right one questions for Sam Craig how much crying has there been and how much more <laughs> is there going to be? What are you going to do? Uh, school runs eventually? Cook? W garden? What are you going to do? I already cook. <laughs> I already do that. Um, I do need to pick up my gardening skills. But um, look, I, I, like Craig already mentioned, I definitely want to stay in tennis. I, um, it's been my whole life and I, I couldn't imagine not, you know, coming into the NTC, you know, in a, in a month's time or something like that. So I'm, I'm still, um, would love to be involved in some capacity, still got to work out exactly what that is going to be. But, um, you know, I, I'm too passionate about it and too invested in what all the other players are doing to just walk away. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll find something in tennis to do for sure. Um, but yeah, otherwise just enjoy a bit of home life and, um, yeah, I guess pull my weight at home a little bit more off, a bit more and more often um, than what I've managed to get away with over the years. So, but yeah, whatever it is, I'm, I'm looking forward to this next phase for sure. Any more questions? Of 
Courtney. Sam, um, just in terms of you know living kind of a nomadic life in a lot of ways that tennis players do for the last you know decade and, and mm -hmm. more, uh, it, what is the how do you feel about kind of setting settling down and, and not having to board planes and live out of suitcase <laughs> and check into hotels and all that sort of stuff? Um, yeah, I mean there's certainly parts of this life that I think I could probably speak for every player. We get a bit sick of you know packing the suitcase up and trying to get on a plane with your rackets and all of that stuff it gets a bit tiresome but um like I, I think it's kind of funny we always kind of wish sometimes we could be home more and and not have to do that and then I think when the time comes we're probably there for three months and get itchy feet and like okay well, where are we going next because it's so you know what we're used to but um you know I, go on a normal holiday now and and do that kind of fun stuff that you kind of always think okay I'm not not going to do that now because I just want to go home I just want to have you know home time so it's going to be um certainly very different um but yeah there's absolutely things I'm going to miss about being on tour and traveling and and um and you know what being a professional tennis player brings to you but um you know there's so much more out there too so we'll see we'll see um you know, you know what i end up doing but um i don't think i'm going to be bored or uh you know too hard finding things to do <laughs> there'll be enough to do for sure and and like i said before i'm just very passionate about this sport and the the players we have so um i'm sure someone will keep me busy Sam, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on what you were just saying and ask you what you think you'll miss the most. What aspects of this life that you've been living for a while now will, will be the hardest to give up? Oh, just getting out on the court and playing. Um, competitively, I, I mean, I'm still going to hit balls, still going to go out there and, and, you know, do that sort of thing. But, um, you know, even sometimes you the build-up to a match isn't always the most, you know, pleasant time. You're nervous, you're a bit stressed, like people around you can tell you've got a match coming up and whatever else. But, um, you know, even that, I think when that all goes, it's kind of, it's sometimes an uncomfortable feeling, but it's a familiar one. Um, but more so than that, just getting out there and playing, you know, having people clap to see you do something good or, you know, whatever it may be. It's just, I think, just the act of, getting out there and competing, um, something I've done obviously my whole life and um, to not have that element of tennis I think is going to be very strange for a little while. Um, but then, yeah, like I said, it's not going to all be gone. So even captaining United Cup, um, you still get those sort of feelings. Now I know what Mole feels like doing you know, BJK Cup. So it's uh, you find it in different ways. But yeah, just getting out there and playing in front of everyone and, and having that support is a very unique experience that, you know, really only professional athletes get. Congratulations on your great career. Thank so you. It's sort of a uh, cliche question, but uh, if you look back on uh, your career, which one is the most memorable, memorable tournament or win or things? And uh, what is the thing you are the most achievement you are the most proud of? Uh, I mean, it's very hard to go past, obviously, winning the US Open in singles. But, um, you know, that is obviously the pinnacle of what any player wants to do is, is win a Grand Slam. And that was certainly a dream of mine to achieve that. And I did. And, um, you know, that's a moment I'll never forget. Um, but even, you know, there's individual matches that really stand out and, and you know, moments in smaller tournaments and my, my first singles title win in Osaka and, um, you know, moments like that that obviously get a bit overshadowed by winning a Grand Slam, but um, they're all steps along the way. And uh, I've got many, many great memories of, uh, you know, smaller tournaments and then all through the phases of of my career so it's really hard to kind of pick one but you know i guess there's a few to look back on so i'm very fortunate that i've got so many great memories from yeah from the sport and and winning losing traveling on and off the court um i've had a a, a great time with meeting so many people and having that support so it's been um yeah just lovely to 
be able to kind of feel that anywhere in the world, not just here in Australia, but I know I've been able to enjoy myself everywhere. Last one. Oh, congratulations, Sam. Um, Thank you. Where do you feel women's tennis in Australia is at at the moment and how much of a hands-on role do you want to play in, in the future of that as well? Oh, well, I mean, like I've said, I still definitely want to be involved in tennis and kind of work out exactly where that fits. But um, look, I think... It's unfortunate, obviously, Isla's pulled out of here um, and we got Dasha also injured. Um, but there's, you know, a whole group of girls that are really pushing to try and get themselves inside the top 100. And they're great people, really good players who are trying to strive to become, you know, the next group that can really solidify their spot in the top 100. And um, I'm sure they're, they're going to get there one day. So they just need that, I guess, get over that next little hurdle. They've all of them have kind of been between 100, 130, got close, dropped out. But, um, you know, I, I do think it, success drives success and, and, you know, it's only going to take one to maybe get through that next spot and then we'll see more coming through. But, um, yeah, I think it, it's obviously unfortunate not to have Isla and Dasher in the draw this year. Clive? How would you describe the importance of tennis in general and this tournament in particular to Australian sports fans and can it be or how would you describe I guess it if it is a, a burden ever for a player from Australia to try to perform well here? Oh, I mean, this event is obviously one of the biggest ones on the tennis calendar but in Australia or around the world it's one of the biggest sporting events you can find. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate in Australia to have one of the four Grand Slams um, and, you know, to play tennis and, and be part of that in your home country. You know, now I live in Melbourne, so my home city. Um, you know, it's an incredible opportunity and, and um, you know, chance to be able to be part of one of the biggest events in the sporting world. Um, and I think, uh, you know, whether you're Australian or you're French or American or English, trying to do that in your home country, of course, there's more elements that come with it. But, um, you know, I think on the whole, playing at home, it really brings out the best in a lot of players, if not all of them. We love playing in front of friends and family. We have the support. We have, you know, the crowd. And, and there's nothing better. So, um, you know, there's, like I said, there's other things that come along with it. But I don't think not one person would trade being able to be in that position for anything else. Courtney, last question. Sam, um, just looking back on your career, did you, when you look, think about your accomplishments, the titles, US Open, Paris, like everything, doubles as well, are you flabbergasted by what you accomplished? Are you, do you look back on it and say, yeah, that's what, that's what I thought I could do? Like, how, how, what's your perspective <laughs> on what you did? Um, I didn't know what I could do. <laughs> I dreamt what I would like to do. Um, and I certainly achieved that um, and more. So, yeah, I, look, I, I think I did everything possible to be as good as I could be. Um, you know, tried everything, whether, it, you know, coach suggests something, if they believed in it, I'd try it. I'd give it a go. And if it didn't work, you know, it was a way to try and improve. But... Um, I think, yeah, one thing I'm very proud of is the fact that I, I know I did everything possible to do what I did. And I think I, I'm happy with, uh, you know, the way I've carried myself on court. It's always been important to me to, um, I guess, be how I was and um, compete hard. And, you know, if you get beat, you get beat. Shake hands and try harder the next day. So, um I think, like I said in my post, every win or loss has got me to where I was. So, but yeah, I certainly achieved way more than what I could have ever imagined. So I can walk away being very proud. Thanks very much, everyone. Craig, I think you've got to just a little closer to the hour.